الحديث الثالث عشر The thirteenth حديث عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال رقي رقيت يوما على بيت حفصة فرأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقضي حاجته مستقبل الشام مستدبر الكعبة This حديث is narrated by الإمام البخاري Bukhari narrated this hadith in three places in his authentic book. So this hadith is collected by Imam al-Bukhari. Bukhari narrated this hadith in three places in his authentic book. Sorry, two places in his, in his authentic book. Two places in his authentic book. Kitab al-Wudu, Kitab al-Wudu. And also Kitab al-Fard al-Khams. He narrated it there. Muslim narrated in Kitab al-Tahara. <coughs> the companion who narrated the hadith, his name is Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab. Uh, his kunya is Abu Abdul Rahman. His kunya is Abu Abdul Rahman. Ahadu Akabir sahaba He is one of the greatest noble companions. Ilman in terms of knowledge. Wadinan and in terms of religion. Shahid al Khandaq, he participated from the battle of the trench. That's where he started from. Wama ba'daha and every battle after that he participated in. He was also from what? He was also from Ahlu Bay'atul Ridwan. The people of Bay'atul Ridwan. The pledge of Ridwan. Who did it with the Prophet? The people who have the tree. The the people who did the pledge with the Prophet under the tree. He was from them. Uh, Allah mentioned them in the Quran, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ The day of Hudaybiyyah. He was one of them. أَثْنَى عَلَيْهِ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ The Prophet praised him. Praised him with what? وَوَصَفَهُ بِالصَّلَاحِ The Prophet ascribed him and referred to him and praised him by saying, he is a righteous individual, righteous servant. He called him Abdul Salih, a righteous servant. And that was after Abdullah ibn Umar came to Hafsa, his sister, who was married to who? Who was the Prophet was married to, sorry. The Prophet was married to her. In the West, the woman is married to the man, that's why we make it. Like in the Arab world, and in the Muslim world, it is the man is married to the woman. So the Prophet was married to who? Hafsa. He was married to Hafsa. And the Messenger, Abdullah ibn Umar, he came and told Hafsa what? What did he tell Hafsa? He told Hafsa that he had a very, 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 very bad dream. And the Prophet realized from there that Abdullah ibn Umar never, used to, was a, never prayed a night prayer. So the Prophet said, Lo kana if only your brother Abdullah ibn Umar was to pray the light prayer. If only he did that. So he ever, ever since that he used to pray. And he earned the status uh, of that being a righteous individual. He was also min akthar sahabati hadithan. He's also from the, the companions who are high, high ranked in terms of narration of hadith. He, knows, he was very strong in his memory in terms of hadith. He would never increase or decrease anything from a narration. He has a lot of virtues. One of the things he was very known for was متبعاً لآثار النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سفراً وحضراً He used to really imitate the Prophet so much. He was known for that. He used to ask if he was ever absent in a gathering where the Prophet said something or done something. He would ask about it, those who were present. And he would really stick to it. وَكَانَ شَدِيدُ التَّحَرِّ وَالْإِحْتِيَاطِ فِي فَتْوَاهُ And he was also known to be very scared in his fatwas. He would never just give fatwa. He would, he would be very careful in the fatwas he gave uh, and everything he used to do. He would be very concerned. They wouldn't just do uh, any fatwa or uh, just answer. He died in Mecca. Abdullah ibn Umar died in Mecca. When the year was Sanata Talafi was 73 Hijriya. And it's also said 74. Some also say 74. This hadith talks about 
facing, sorry, turning your back towards the Kaaba. This hadith talks about turning your back towards the Kaaba fil bunyani in a building, inside a building. The toilet is a building now. Whilst do your call of nature. Not in the opening, but inside a, builded, a built, um, constructed place. The hadith, Abdullah ibn Umar said, Raqitu. Ma'ana Raqitu? I climbed. So it's, it's like it was a hill. It's like a hill. So he said, I climbed. Yawman one day, ala bayti Hafsa. I climbed the house of Hafsa. You know, I climbed up. Um, and Hafsa was his sister. And as he was climbing up, what happened? He said, Fara'aytu nabi I saw the Prophet. Yaqdi hajatahu, doing his call of nature. I saw him. Mustaqbil al-Shami, the Prophet was facing towards Sham. Pay attention. Mustadbir al-Ka'bati, the Ka'bah was facing his back. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. So in the previous hadith, what did we learn? We learned that, that you're not allowed to face the Kaaba or turn away from it. But here Abdullah ibn Umar is informing us that one day he was climbing and he saw in the house of his sister Hafsa, the mother of the believers, radiallahu ta'ala anha. He saw her. Uh, sorry, he saw him alayhi salatu salam. He saw the Prophet um, doing his call of nature. He was facing towards Sham, specifically Bayt al -Maqdis. The Prophet was specifically facing towards Bayt al -Maqdis. And his back was towards where? And the back was towards um, the Kaaba. The fiqh that we take from the hadith. One. يُؤْخَذُ مِنَ الْحَدِيثِ We take from the hadith تَتَبُّعُ أَحْوَالُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ To follow up the Prophet's situation, following up. كُلُّهَا All of it. وَنَقْلُهَا And to transmit all of it. The first point that we learn from this hadith is to follow up the Prophet's situation, all of it. Even at the times when he was doing call of nature. And that his actions are a legislation from Allah. That the Sahaba has transmitted it. They would, they would transmit it. Uh, number two, يُخَذُ منه also was taken from this hadith is الكناية بقضاء الحاجة عن البول والغائط that we refer to the word call of nature, قضاء الحاجة instead of saying uh, number one or two. The hadith just says uh, he was doing his call of nature. يَقْضِ حَاجَةَ It's not the vulgar, the sharia is not vulgar in the way he speaks. The words are very the censored. You can't just whatever one. You see. Number three. You khadu min who we also take from this hadith. Jawazi qada il haja. We also take from this hadith the permissibility of fulfilling your call of nature in a place which is a bit high. Some some something is very high, like a roof top or etc. As long as you can't be seen. Number four, minhu is what we also take from this hadith is Jawazu, the permissibility of al ikhbaru amithli dalik, that is permissible to transmit matters like this. It is permissible. The to follow wal amal and to imitate the Prophet in. That it was permissible for Abdullah ibn Umar to transmit for us the Prophet's action of call of nature so we can follow it. It's good he did that. Five, يُخَذُ مِنْهُ is also taken from this جَوَازُ the permissibility تَبْسُطْ أَقَارِبِ الزَّوْجَةِ فِي بَيْتِ الزَّوْجِ حَالَةِ الْإِحْتِشَامِ وَكَفُّ الْبَصَرِ عَمَّا يُسْتَحِيَ عَنْ رُؤْيَتِ We also take from this uh, that the family member the family of the uh, the family member of the person who is married like the wife Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha that the family member of the, the wife 
due to the fact of their occurrence, they can come huh, and they can see what's in the house. They mean they've got higher priority than the rest of the people. Meaning, they will do things that nobody else is allowed to do because of the fact that it's the sister's house. Abdullah ibn Umar is the only person who could do this because Hafsa was his sister. Now we're going to speak about a matter which is a dispute that occurred between the scholars pertaining to the issue of facing the Qibla or facing away from the Qibla when doing your call of nature. And there are many views that came regarding the two narrations that we took. Which is what? The narration that we took before this which was the narration of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari clearly says what? That the Prophet ﷺ have prohibited us from facing towards the Qibla and turning, away to, turning our backs towards the Qibla. And that when they came to the constructed buildings in Sham, huh, he said that we would slightly we divert from it. We will turn away from the Qibla, sideways. You see, like in the hadith of Hafsa, here right now, or Abdullah ibn Umar, sorry, what do we find? That the Prophet's back was facing towards the Qibla. So how scholars, this a big discussion came from it. There are many views. We're going to mention each view's evidences, and then inshallah we're going to choose which one's the correct. Inshallah. The way we do it, inshallah, is we're first going to we'll present all the views and whatever argue, uh, proofs they brought, and then we're going to mention. Um, we're going to answer for each view what they said. We give them an answer. Once we've given them the answer. Then we're going to strengthen the view that is correct in this issue. That's how the matter should be dealt with in terms of fiqh. As for tarjihun bi ghayri murajjahin yusamma tahakum, as for to say that this view is stronger than this view, without replying back to the other views and putting it in, in correct view, uh, light, is dictatorship. So the person needs to say, these are the views, these are their arguments, and each argument, the answer for them is this. This is where they got it wrong, or this is why their argument is not strong enough. Every one of them. And then, this is strong, and strengthening the one that is said to be strong. So, but now we're gonna, just going to present each view, and their evidences. The first view is, Jama'ah, a group of scholars, they took that the prohibition of facing the Qibla, and turning, towards, and turning away from the Qibla, is when it's in uh, an open place. Desert. They said it's in Sahara. If it's inside a a, 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 a building in Abniya, in a constructed building, then they said Fala Ba'sa bidalik. There's no problem. And they used evidences. From the evidences that they used is the hadith collected by Bukhari and Muslim who said that Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, may Allah be pleased with him. And his father, that he said that a group of people, Abdullah ibn Umar said this, that a group of people um, have said that do not face towards the Qibla and Baytul Maqdis, even as well. A group of people have said that. And don't face to get, uh, away from it. But I, Abdul ibn Umar is saying, climbed uh, 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 towards the Prophet ﷺ, fulfilling his nature, his back was towards the Kaaba, and his front والسلام, was facing towards Baytul Maqdis. I saw him, he said. So Abdullah ibn Umar was arguing that he uh, عنه, held the view that it's different when it's building. And that is his evidence. And that's the first people view, the first view, that's their argument. They also brought another argue, uh, another evidence which they said um, Abu Dawood narrated on a chain of narration which is Hassan from Marwan al Asfar. From who? Al Marwan al Asfar. Who said, Ra'ayt ibn Umar, I saw ibn Umar, anakha rahilatahu, I saw ibn Umar mount his, uh, uh, sorry, come down from his riding beast 
and he put his riding beast in front of him and he done his call of nature facing towards the Qibla. He sat down and he done his urine. Abdul ibn Umar. Faqultu uh, Marwan al-Asfar said, I said to Ibn Umar, Alaysa qad nuhi an hadha, ya da Abdul Rahman, isn't this prohibited? You're facing towards the Qibla. And then he said, Bala, yes. Inna qad nuhi an thalika, this was prohibited. فَإِذَا كَانَ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الْقِبْلَةِ مَنْ يَسْتُرُكْ But if there is somebody who is going to protect you from the Qibla, فَلَا بَأْسَ There's no harm. Meaning, my riding beast is protecting me from the Qibla. It's between me and the Qibla, so there's no problem. So if a person is inside a building, they also have walls around them. So according to that view, also the third evidence that they brought was that they said there's a difference between an open land and a constructed building. And they said that in the desert, when a person is using, he, when he's facing towards the Qibla, if he, fa if he puts his back towards it, or if he puts his front towards it, most likely a person who is praying, whether from the angels or from the humans or from the jinn, will see you because they're facing the Qibla with you. And so they will see your private part, either from the back or the front. They will see you. Does that make sense? So they say your aura is going to show. They're going to see you in the Qibla. But if you're sideways, they're going to see the side of your body. And your aura won't show. So they say that's our, our reasoning. That's the first view. And that's their evidences. The second view is a group of scholars, they said that the desert and the constructed building are the same. And that the prohibition encompasses both of them. And they used as evidence the hadith of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari that we just talked. And Abu Ayyub's action itself is a proof, they said. That he said that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited facing the Qibla and facing away from it. إِذَا أَتَيْتُمُ الْغَائِطَ فَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُ الْقِبْلَةَ بِغَائِطٍ وَلَا بَوْلٍ وَلَا تَسْتَدْبِرُوهَا وَلَكِنْ شَرِّقُ أُغَرِّبُوا And also Abu Ayyub's action himself, well, what he did was, he said we came to uh, Sham and we found that the toilets were built like that so we turned on the toilet sideways uh, not facing the Qibla and we were asking Allah for forgiveness so they said that the prohibition is to face or to, uh, to turn away it's general and the prohibition they said is present in the desert and outside, the Prophet ﷺ didn't put no exception to it. The Prophet did not put no exception. And they also even replied by saying, they also replied by saying that though they answered for the who? The first group of people who said that the desert is uh, the prohibition. If you're blocked by something, there is no problem. They said that doesn't make sense. Because anyone who does it even in the desert most likely there's going to be mountains that are in front of him before the Kaaba. There are also going to be before the Kaaba. So they said the prohibition encompasses both of them and they're all not allowed. Whether in the desert or whether in a constructed building. Three, a group of scholars, they took the view that the hadith are all abrogated. Abrogated. And they said that it's abrogated with the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. And the hadith is collected by Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah. And this hadith is sahih li ghayri. Jabir said, Kana Rasulullah, the messenger used to be one who prohibited us to face the Qibla or to, wood or to face away from the Qibla with our private parts. Thumma after that, Jabir said, Qad ra'aytu, I saw him qabla mawti, before his death, one year before his death. Facing towards the Qibla. I saw him. Are you with me? Meaning he abrogated Ali salam by his action. Number four. The fourth view is the scholars that said there's a difference between the facing and the turning towards the Qibla. They said that there's istidbar, putting your back towards the Qibla and facing it, they said there's a difference. So what did they say? They said, لا يجوز الاستقبال. It is not permissible to face the Qibla in the Sahra 
and also in the constructed building is not allowed. He said to face the Qibla in the desert and also in the constructed building, like in a house, they said the facing is not allowed. But to put your back towards the Qibla is permissible in both of the situations. And they used as the evidence the hadith of Salman al Farisi, where he said, Laysa fihi illa nahyu istiqbali faqat. He said that there is no prohibition except in facing the Qibla. That's what Salman al Farisi said. And that's the evidence. Number five. They said, the fifth group they said, which are some scholars, the prohibition here is the prohibition here is lil tanzi they said that in the nahya lil tanzi that the nahi here is for prohibition like haram proper and they used Sorry, the fifth group of scholars, they said that the prohibition here is diverted from its prohibition and that it's made, it is made uh, disliked, karaha, it's disliked. The third, fifth group, they said that the prohibition that is mentioned in the hadith that says don't face towards the qibla and don't turn, toward, uh, don't tur don't, don't turn your backs towards the qibla, they said that it's this prohibition, this this prohibition is not um, haram, but it is lil karaha that is disliked. The sixth view. They permitted the turning of your back towards the qibla when you're in a building only. And they used the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar that we just saw. Because the Prophet's back was towards the qibla. Number six, seven. The seventh view is the prohibition encompasses the Kaaba and it also encompasses uh, and Baytul Maqdis. So they said you can't face Baytul Maqdis, you can't turn towards Baytul Maqdis. The same way you can't turn towards the Kaaba and you can't turn away from the Kaaba. That's the seventh view. The eighth view is that the prohibition is specific for the people of Medina. They're the only ones that it's referring to. And anyone who is not in Medina, huh, the prohibition. So the Medina, we said, also Sham, prohibitions on them as well, because we said, remember, they are also like Medina in terms of the way the direction of the Kaaba is not, is not in the west or the east. Also Yemen. So they said, anyone other than that, who are in other places in the world, their pro the prohibition is not referring to them. Okay? Those are the eight views that are in this matter. Okay, um, now that we've mentioned the eight different views regarding this matter, we're going to now have to do what? Bring all these views, get rid of those who are weak, and mention which is the strongest. Okay, and uh, the way I'm going to do it, inshallah, is I'm going to start mentioning the weakest as they are, and get rid of them quickly, and so then I'll come to the strongest ones and compare them uh, between themselves, inshallah. The ones that said that the hadith is specific for the people of Medina, then this without a doubt, it is very, very weak. And the way it's weak is because the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ goes against that. Where the Prophet ﷺ is addressing, where he said, شَرِّقُوا أَوْ غَرِّبُوا He said, alayhi um, salatu uh, face towards the east or the west. To say that this is only for the people of Medina needs an external evidence. You have to supply us with other evidences to say that this is specific for the people of Medina. Because the hadith seems very general. If he seems very general. So, <coughs> that is a, a pro, that's a weak point. The second one is, 
those who have claimed and nahya mutlaq that the prohibition is general for the two qibla Mecca and Baytul Maqdis who also added Baytul Maqdis to it um, then their evidence is the hadith of uh, Ma'qal al-Asadi who said that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited that the Prophet prohibited us to face the two qiblas with urine or feces the Prophet prohibited us to do that that's their evidence this hadith Abu Dawood narrated in his Sunan Ibn Majah also narrated it Ahmed also narrated it Ibn Abi Shayba also narrated it all of them they narrated it from this chain of narration which is who? Amr ibn Yahya who narrated from Abi Zayd this Abu Zayd uh, this Abu Zayd individual he is unknown Jahala we don't know who he is so because of his, the fact that he is unknown it weakens the narration and the hadith is not taken into consideration <coughs> Hafiz ibn Hajar rahimahullah said Hafiz ibn Hajar rahimahullah said wa ala taqdir sihati even if we say that it's authentic which it isn't but even if we do say that it's authentic the Prophet is talking to the people of Medina and saying to the people of Medina because the people of Medina if they face towards if they turn their back on the Qibla what's going to happen? they're going to have to face Bayt al-Maqdis so that's why the Prophet prohibited it from them because they're always going to be facing the Kaaba that's why he said it to them but other places in the world they might turn towards the Qibla or even face the Qibla without Bayt al-Maqdis being in their way so the addressing that of that was specific for but even then it's weak even then it is weak and it has no basis okay um, the third group who said that the istidbar turning your back who permitted the istidbar in the construction buildings they said inside a building you can turn your back you're allowed to turn your back and they used the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar huh? Then this is a, 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 also the hadith of Salman al-Farisi. This is a weak madhab, very weak, because the prohibition of turning your back and facing the Qibla is mentioned in the Sahihain. So if Salman al-Farisi's narration doesn't have that additional information, and the, or the hadith of Ibn Umar, then the additional information is in the hadith of the Sahihain, Bukhari Muslim. And uh, we have to implement that additional information. The hadith of Abu Abu Ayyub al Ansari. Tha. Anyone who claimed, anyone who claimed that the prohibition here is not haram, that the prohibition here is disliked, then that person who tries to use as evidence the hadith of Ibn Umar and Jabir, huh? tries to use the hadith of Ibn Umar and Jabir, then this individual that says this prohibition is only uh, the facing and the turning, both of them are what? They're only nahi litanzil, the nahi of dislike. We will say to them that the hadith of Ibn Umar and the hadith of Jabir ta'ala anhu have no clear point that this is disliked. So there's no, the word to istidlal of it uh, doesn't go against that, the prohibition. It doesn't go against the prohibition. When we mention it later, you'll understand. There's no, uh, Ibn Umar or Jabir is not going against the prohibition. The prohibition still stands. It still stands. Um, the other one which is the Nasq is abrogated. The ones who argued and said that it's abrogated. The scholars of Qawaid al they or the Usul Usuliyin in Ilm al-Usul, they say that فَلَا يُصَارُ إِلَى النَّسْخِ We don't go towards abrogation. Huh? If there is a way to bring the narrations together, trying to run to abrogation, when there is a way to bring the narrations together is not what you do. Abrogation is the last alternative. When there is impossible for all the narrations to be brought together, then we will look, we'll look into abrogation. But here so far we have a way to bring the narrations together without resulting to abrogation. So abrogation is not required, we don't need it. Also, on that tone, pay attention. Uh, which is that 
that the nasikh, a, 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 a brigator, according to the Usuriyin, um, an action cannot abrogate a speech. An action cannot abrogate a speech. The hadith of Ibn Umar is an action. And the hadith of Abu, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari is a speech. A speech and an, an action cannot abrogate a speech. According to the ulama of Usul. So from those two angles, abrogation is not a good answer. What's left now? The group that said that the prohibition here is the desert and the building. Sorry, they said that there's a difference between the, the prohibition here is in the desert and the building both. And it's towards the Kaaba. Whether you face it or you don't face it. That's the first one. The second one, the last view, view we're talking about, uh, that we're going to now compare because they're the two strongest view, which is the view that says that you, can, you should not face towards the Qibla, huh? and you should not turn your back towards the Qibla, whether you're in the desert or not. That group, and the group that said, there is a difference between when it's a desert and when it's a building. That the prohibition is talking about the desert and not about the building. Those two views are the two strongest views. They need tarjih. And they need us to differ between the two. Let's mention some of the arguments that were brought from two groups and tackle between their views. The group that said that the prohibition is general, whether it's a desert or a building, they said our evidence is the hadith of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. And also the action of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari and his action. So they said that is our evidence. Um, <coughs> so they said this is hadith Abu Ayyub al-Ansari used as evidence. Look at the evidence. The Sahabi understood it from it. The other group says, well, we also have Ibn Umar who understood it the same way. We have Ibn Umar's understanding of the hadith of Hafsa when he saw the Prophet Sallallahu do his call of nature when he brought his riding beast and he put it towards the Qibla and then he urinated then a Sahabi with another Sahabi we have so we're still on the same page who's gonna move, whose for view is stronger still the other group came and said okay wait okay wait um, they said that the desert the desert there is always a person who's either praying who might, able, who might see you if you're facing towards the Qibla or you're facing away from it. You're going to have somebody who's going to see you. His eye is going to hit you. They said that the reasoning of that being prohibited, you're bringing a reason when there is a nasarih, a clear-cut text, which the reasoning for it is to honor the Kaaba. Our reason is not that. You're going to be seen or our person is going to be seen. The reason why it's prohibited to face it or turn away from it is because there's a is because there is a, a the honor of the Kaaba and respecting the, the Kaaba, honoring and respecting the Kaaba. And that is present in what? In a building, and it's outside a building, honoring the Kaaba, it, it takes place inside a building, or even if it's in a desert, you still have to respect it. Regardless of, and if you say that there's, uh, sorry, there are things that are protecting you from it in a building, then also there are valleys and, so where do we move? Every, arg every group has pushed their argument straight. The way to bring it together and to push both groups is, first of all is, the Prophet ﷺ spoke in one and in another one he did something. Are you all with me? The Prophet, one, one of them. The first hadith, which is the hadith of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, he said something, which is, uh, if one of you comes to do his call of nature, don't face towards the Qibla or don't turn away from the Qibla. That's a speech, utterance. The hadith of Ibn Umar is what? And the hadith of Ibn Umar is an action. That's what we have here. Okay? <coughs> the hadith, which is Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, is it general? Yeah, it's general. But the hadith of Ibn Umar, is it specific in a specific place? Yeah, it's specific in a, de in a desert, uh, sorry, in a house. In Qawa'id Usuliyat, 
which one takes presidency, the specific or the general? The, the, the specific takes it. The specific always takes presidency over the general. They give presidency to the specific over the, the general. Remember when we mentioned, when we mentioned, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعجبه التيمن في تناعله وترجله وطهوره في شأن كل وفي شأن كل is a general statement. Is that right? صح? In all of these affairs, he used to like to use his right. Didn't we say that? But then you gave presidency to when he goes into the toilet over it, because it's specific. The specific always takes presidency over the general text. Are you all with me? It always does. So then, what happens here? We say that. This is the way that this ha the hadith bottles down. That this view that says that the facing of the qibla or turning your back towards the qibla is in a building. So the prohibition is when it's in a desert and you're permitted and you're allowed when you're in a building. That view is stronger. To, with, to, dif dif to, to, to differ between what? The desert? To differ between the, the desert and the building. That view is stronger. That the prohibition of the hadith of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari is referring to which one? It's referring to the desert. It's referring to the, the desert. And there is, a pro, there is a permission and a permission. You're allowed if you're inside a building, a place, a house. It's allowed. Because of the specific narration of Ibn Umar rahimahullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu who specifically showed. That's the view Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymeen he rahimahullah took. Um, Imam Malik took. Imam Shafi'i took. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal took. Ishaq ibn Rahuyata took. Abdullah ibn Umar took. Sha'bi took. Um, Al Imam Al Shawkani took. Al Imam Al Shawkani took. Naam. 